Welcome back to episode five of Adventure Kings Presents, A Beginner's Guide to Camping. Now, if you're up to date with the series, then by now you should have a great idea of the basics of getting into camping, the most amazing pastime that you can be a part of. Now, if you're just tuning in, then welcome to the series. I really reckon you should take a moment and go back to the start though, so you don't miss anything. In this series, I've talked about three things that I believe to be true about camping. That camping doesn't mean roughing it, that camping should be fun, and that camping has come a seriously long way over the past decade or so. I've put links to the first four episodes in the series in the description, and while you don't have to watch them in order, there's excellent information in all four episodes that you shouldn't miss. Last episode, I handed the video over to my mate Khan, who ran through how to set up a camping electrical system that will let you take all the modern comforts of home with you when you go camping. My personal favourite was the fact that you can actually take a proper coffee machine camping with you and run it wherever you are. In this episode, I'm going to talk about something that I'm a really big fan of, and that is making camping more comfortable. Like I mentioned a moment ago, I firmly believe that camping shouldn't be about roughing it. I think the more comfortable you make your camping experience, the more fun you'll have, and the more often you'll go camping, which is definitely the aim. I'll show you a heap of clever ideas to make your campsite more comfortable and hopefully persuade a few of you that are still on the fence about camping that it's something you should definitely give a go. Before we get started though, take a moment, do me a favour, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because that's how I know that we're getting good feedback on the videos that we're making. And if you like the videos that we're making, well then we'll continue to make more. Okay, let's get into it. So the first thing we'll talk about is how to add shelter and protection from the elements to your campsite. I reckon that's the key to a comfortable camping experience because no one wants to sweat it out in the glaring hot sun or shiver through a freezing cold night or get soaked with rain just because a little bit of a storm passes through your campsite. When it comes to camping shelter, there are a couple of options you've got. The first, and something I really reckon every camper should have, is an awning mounted to the side of your vehicle. These side awnings are really easy to set up and in under a minute, you'll have a good amount of shelter for a couple of people. They're also great because you can use them at the park, at the kids' sport, or even on the job site, making them even more useful. You can then add awning sidewalls to further enclose your camping area from wind, sun, or rain coming in from the sides, which is definitely a great idea. The main downside though to a vehicle-mounted awning is that if you want to move your car to go for a drive, well then you've got to pack your awning away. Not a big deal, but definitely worth considering. Another option for camping shelter is to carry a portable camping gazebo with you. These give you a similar style of instant shelter as an awning, but their freestanding nature then means your vehicle isn't tied to your campsite. Most camping gazebos come in two sizes, 3x3 three three metres and 6x3 metres. For a solo camper, a couple or a small family, the 3x3 three three metre gazebos are ideal. They set up really easily and offer a huge amount of sheltered space. A 6x3 metre gazebo obviously doubles that size and makes for an excellent communal campsite if you go camping with your mates or other families. In fact, a lot of campers will often take a single 6x3 metre gazebo between a couple of families or groups and each set up their own individual campsites using the 6x3 metre gazebo as a central spot to hang out under. And like awnings, you can get gazebo walls that further enclose the gazebo and add an extra level of weather protection, which is an excellent idea. The final type of common camping protection from the elements comes in the form of these right here, mesh floors. The ability to mostly keep up out of the dirt is a godsend when you're camping. They have a clever woven mesh design that lets a lot of dirt and sand fall right down through them without letting it back up. They're absolutely amazing on sand as well and will even do a great job of keeping ground moisture at bay. They go hand in hand with an awning or a gazebo and sidewalls and round out your ability to protect yourself from the elements. Now that is camping comfortable in my book. Now with your camping shelter sorted, let's take a look at the different types of camping furniture that you can carry with you. The first and the most obvious is a quality, comfy camp chair. Look, forget those $10 cheapies from the hardware store. Take it from me, they're literally not worth the money. For me, a huge part of camping is relaxing around a campfire and to do that, you need a comfortable camp chair. Look for one that has extra padding and bolstering in the back and the armrests. And of course, a drink holder never goes astray either. And if you've got littlies in your camping crew, then you can even get kids camping chairs that are the perfect size for them. Bonus tip here, if it's cold and you've got the campfire going, 
get a little shovel of coals and put them under your camp chair. Trust me, you'll thank me for that one. Okay, so next, camping tables. I reckon that when you're camping, you can never have enough table space. There's nothing more frustrating than trying to meal prep or eat off your lap or off a tiny, flimsy camp table. I'm a massive fan of these cool roll-out camp tables because they take up next to no room when they're packed away, they set up easily, and they're super sturdy too. I reckon you wouldn't even go astray carrying two of these. Like I said, you can never have too much table space when you're camping. The third and final way to make your campsite more comfortable is to light it up nice and bright. Of course, a big part of camping is settling in around a glowing campfire, but before that happens, you've got to cook dinner, and that's no fun if you're trying to do it in the dark. You might remember the old gas-powered camping lanterns that connect to the top of a barbecue bottle, or those old battery-powered halogen camp lights. The main downside to gas lanterns is they're relatively fragile and can be easily broken with a fall or a knock, and halogen lights tend to draw a lot of power while not emitting a whole heap of light. Both of these styles of camp lights have been superseded these days by LED lighting, which has a few very big benefits. LED lighting is super bright, super efficient, and nearly break proof, which are three very positive characteristics when it comes to camping lights. But the biggest benefit to LED camp lighting is how efficient it is. You can run LED camp lights all night without risking flattening your deep cycle battery. One of the most popular types of LED camp lights these days are these cool bar light kits. They have a number of long aluminium bars filled with multiple LEDs and plug either into a cigarette socket or straight onto your battery with alligator clips. Most of them have magnets on the back so they can attach easily to a metal surface like the frame of a steel gazebo or the side of a vehicle. Plus you usually get things like these straps to hang them just about anywhere else. You even get a little dimmer that lets you adjust the brightness, full brightness when you're cooking and eating dinner and then turn them down for a bit of ambience when you're relaxing around the fire. As you can see, it's really easy to add some serious luxury and comfort to your camping experience if you sort the basics. Protection from the elements, comfy and sturdy camp furniture and camp lighting. Add a few select bits of gear to your camping kit and you'll camp comfortable every single time. Well, there you go, making camping more comfortable. What do you reckon? Got any specific questions that you'd like answered? In the next and final episode in this Beginner's Guide to Camping series, I'm gonna sit down and try and answer as many of your questions as I possibly can. So if you've got a question, jump down into the comments and leave it right there. And before I go, just a reminder, take a moment, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way I get a bit of feedback as to whether you like the video and whether I should keep making more. Thanks very much for joining us for episode five of Adventure Kings Presents, A Beginner's Guide to Camping. I'll catch you next time.